I think the point is unique because it's a school that was started by parents. It um, parents came to us, and we had our kids and and our child, our daughter, in a charter school in Winston Salem, and they started commuting to Winston Salem looking for a similar type type of school, and they said we need this type of school in our community. I think um, one of the reasons we started the point is because. In too many instances, we saw a disconnect with what we as parents were trying to instill at home and what our kids were learning in the school environment. And so they came to us and they asked us to start the school. And so parents got together, a small group of us, and we said, and we visualized, and we said, what type of school do we want our child to go to from kindergarten through 12th grade? What type of values do we want to instill in our children? Who do we want them to be in life? And so we started brainstorming, researching, figuring out how can we do this, and we believed in it, and here we are now. So that's what makes us unique. It was started by parents who believe in what we're doing. I chose the point uh, for my son because he was in a similar school out in uh, Winston, and we commuted there for two years. About It's about a 35 minute commute one way and we did that for two years. It was just automatic that we were going to come here because it's, it's a sister feed school for that school in Winston. And so it was a similar style, similar learning style, um, classroom structure the same. And, and also it's closer. <laughs> I just love school. I, I think it's, it's a great school. I like going to the point because it teaches me more. My teachers and the principal never give up on me and it's just an amazing school. Well, I think inside my classroom, by me being a K-1 teacher, that it means that when we come in that door, we start. 7.30, we're working, and we're working to the end of the day. It also means that, you know, as a kindergarten, first grade teacher, I'm teaching on a first grade level throughout the entire day. We're learning pronouns, adverbs, adjectives, you know. My kids at this point come in strong, and they're going to leave even stronger. I think we have homework almost every night because our teacher wants us to prepare for Friday's test and she wants us to learn not just at school but at home too. Starting early and starting strong means that you start thinking about college in kindergarten and in first grade. You don't start thinking about college your senior year of high school. I think the fact that we're a small school and we identify each child as being an individual and we work with them on their individual basis on their individual academic level. I think that here we have the opportunity to look at each child individually and then decide on what type of approach the child is the center of the education process. Let's go to the next problem. It says how much? And so they get to think, explore, experiment at a different level and see what the, whatever you're offering in the class. Start early, start strong. That's what we believe. And um, our kids come in and they know and they understand it. Uh, we have set up our, our schedule in a way to where um, most of the learning takes place early in the morning because we know research says that that's when their brains are functioning the best. So, um, but also start early, not just when they're in kindergarten, but I mean, we have to start when, when we are thinking about having children. And so that's what we want to get in the mindset of parents that if you start now, if you start when they're four and five years old, you're going to get the product that you want when, they're, when they are 18. And you start strong. What does that mean? That means that I am disciplined when they are five years old, when they're doing homework. I think I have homework every night because we have a big packet that we have to do. And, and it inspires me because it's a big homework packet and I like to do homework. That means I'm teaching them work ethic. That means I'm teaching them how to own it. We have three rules here at The Point, only three. Make good choices, own it, and earn it. So I'm teaching them how to make good choices at five years old, teaching them how to own their responsibilities, and they have to earn privileges. We don't want them to grow up thinking that everything is given to them, but when they feel a sense of accomplishment, when they earn something, when they earn field trips, when they earn fun day on Fridays, they feel a sense of accomplishment. And so that, that's really important to us. And we start early at five years old 
We have no problem when they turn 10, when they turn 12, when they turn 16. So as we move into middle school next year, we're gonna see kids who started here with us moving into middle school in that tough time, that tough adolescent time, but they're gonna have those values instilled in them. Um, we are of a mixed heritage, so um, I also, at home, I teach that to my daughters too. You know, they have a Spanish culture and they have their black culture too. Well, um, here at the point, they make it a point to include uh, cultural diversity and um, they do have a form of cultural competency that I totally agree with. I like going to the point because it gives you a better education and it opens more doors in the future. The values that the point teaches on discipline where if someone's talking, no one else should talk. Uh, when you're walking in, in the hallway, you shouldn't run. I'm big on that kind of thing. And so the point enforces that here. So that, that kind of uh, experience here translates to the home where it's discipline, honor, respect, and, uh, and teaching. When you look at um, the pledges that our children make, and it's to honor each other, to show each other respect. You know, um, they speak that and they, and they mimic that here. And once again, we're able to mimic those things at home. And one of the things that um, we did in starting the school is we began with the end in mind. What kind of 18-year-olds do we want to see? Um, School-wide, we use a philosophy of cats. C is close your mouth. A is ask and answer questions. T is track the speaker. And S is sit still. And every child knows this from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. It's the routine that they got. Um, that structure, uh, it has been so crucial to the developmental um, stages that I've been trying to improve in my daughter's lives. You know, there's a certain uh, time to play and there's a time for work. We want to see respectful 18-year-olds. We want to see 18-year-olds who are brilliant, who have confidence in what they know and that they can perform. And we want to see 18-year-olds that know how to work hard, how to have discipline, how to do your best each and every day. And so we basically started there and worked back to kindergarten and said, well, let's start doing this now so that we can have the end um, product or the end kind of human being that we want to see. And so um, what we found even in a lot of times that success with our young people is not just even about not knowing the ABCs or the one, two, threes, but it has to do with making bad choices, um, with not really having strong habits of being able to follow through something to the end. We not only model it for our students, but we also have our students model discipline and respect for each other. Uh, demonstrating how to be kind to your friends, how to share with your friends, and just you, even sharing with each other and respecting each other in front of the children. That's why discipline, being able to follow through and respect, uh, respecting yourself and then being able to show honor and respect to other people is something that we teach uh, from day one here at The Point. And we think that that's a, 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 a very a significant reason why these young people are going to be successful in life. Here at The Point, we teach the Common Core uh, to the best ability of ourselves and how it can be most effective for learning for the students. Well, when I wanted to teach the Dr. Seuss, um, I was able to do all the normal things that you would do across the board for Common Core. However, when we did green eggs and ham, we were allowed to bring in green eggs and ham. So not only was my class able to see the green eggs and ham from the book, but we also incorporated science into that. So they got to see the procedure of making green eggs and ham. And at the end, they got to eat it. So, you know, it just brought a little different twist to the class. A typical day at the point is very consistent. It begins with morning rituals. It begins with a pledge. pledge of The promise pledge, what you promise yourself, promise yourself to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. Promise yourself to always believe, to, to always try, and, and to always do your best. Promise yourself. It begins with lift every voice and sing. It begins with um, 
our rules, our, our school rules, our classroom rules. It begins with um, morning work. The kids don't want to miss their morning work uh, in their classroom. A typical day also includes, after the rigorous learning, because it is focused, we have, we have a saying that every second is learning. At the point. And then we have time for play, we have time for fun, we have time for Taekwondo, for hip hop dance, for choir, we have fun day every Friday, you can earn that if you stay on point Monday through Thursday. Take your test on Friday, earn fun day, and they just really look forward to it and it's very consistent so they know what is expected and they can rise and meet our expectations. When you're able to find socially and you're able to see that social development and most certainly able to see that academic flourish, that tells me without any question you're in the right place. My name is Gustavo Smith and um, I'm a single parent with a four-year-old daughter and a six-year-old daughter. Tense here at the point. I am extremely impressed with uh, the point, not only because of the values that teach here, but also because of the academic um, achievements that uh, my daughter has had since she's been here at the point. A couple years ago, um, me and my daughters, we were homeless, living out of a van, and um, I wanted to stay in school. So um, even in that situation, I went to a community college, uh, GTCC, here in um, uh, Jamestown, North Carolina, and uh, graduate with an associate's degree. And um, I also, I'm a Phi Theta Kappa graduate, and um, I also won the Academic Excellence Award uh, for G, uh, all GTCC students. I was very um, determined to stay in school because I know how hard it is for um, anybody to survive out in um, this uh, society. While I was going through those changes of trying to graduate myself, uh, my daughter was actually in kindergarten and I didn't really have the time to commit to her homework at home. But um, as far as right now is concerned, my daughter is, um, she's doing excellent. I mean, her communication skills uh, that she learned from here at the point, she went from simple one syllable, two syllable words to three and four syllable words. And now I can't get her to stop talking. <laughs> but the importance of um, communication and her speaking abilities and uh, just how far she's gone from the time she just started the point, I'm, I'm totally impressed with that. I owe the point um, a lot of gratitude just based on the fact that where I, I had a little slack in my abilities as a parent because of my own, my own pursuit of trying to um, uh, excel academically. She, um, the, the point actually helped my daughter during that time. By her rising like that on her own, I was like, wow, this, is, um, this school has really done their job with my daughter. We don't follow a basal series. We're not given any textbooks to follow. We use our own imagination and we teach the Common Core. Mo is something that our school uses throughout the entire school from starting from K through fifth grade. M stands for make good choices. O stands for own it. So if you do something that maybe is not correct or responsible, you own up to it. And E is earn it. We don't give the children anything here at the point. They earn everything that they receive and they work hard. You earn what you do in the classroom, you earn what outside of the classroom, and you do your best. The point has something very unique here that, um, that we have learned as parents and also that the students have learned. It's the leadership and it's the follow through that is consistent here at the point to have our youngsters and our children who they are to be, which is the future. Look at the school that you send your kid to. Uh, look at that school, look at everything that they're teaching your kid. Come over to the point, take a visit, and see what advantages the point have over the other school. I promise you that a child that goes all the way through at the point will go to college and succeed. That's our word and that's our pledge to make sure that they're prepared, not just to go to college, but to succeed in college and beyond.